I think laser cutters are something that every hobbyist, any prop maker should have. The problem is, is that they're super expensive until recently. Stay tuned, I'm gonna explain why and how you can get yourself one of these laser cutters and start making some really cool stuff. Recently, I was approached by Ortur Lasers or Afiro. I believe they're kind of the same company. Maybe the laser brand has changed a little bit and asked if I wanted to try one of their UV laser diode engravers slash cutters. Now, when they said cutter, I was like, really? At five watts, my 40 watt laser cuts fairly well and fairly fast, but there's no way five watts is gonna cut anything. I was wrong. This thing can actually cut pretty darn good. Is it fast? No, but it does the job. And if you're a hobbyist, this is perfect. You have still have to figure things like how to get the smoke out. So you're gonna have to have a very well ventilated area. I'm just gonna to try to get this machine up and running into something that I can use as a laser cutter for things like EVA foam and whatnot that I use for cosplay and props. Cosplayers out there, I'm telling you something. This is the tool that you're gonna want. It's an inexpensive laser. It cuts foam like magic. And given the engraving techniques I'm, I'm messing around, it can do bevel cuts, which blew my mind. Anyways, it's gonna open things up quite a bit for a lot of the cosplayers out there. First thing I need is something that will raise the stock I'm cutting up to a level that's up above the main bench so that it can cut all the way through and also that it can ventilate out. Now you can get grates and racks and there's a lot of people out there doing different things. But I started thinking, I wonder if the cardboard could handle sort of the bottom edge of the laser. As a side note, the cardboard is the box it was shipped in. So it's pretty handy when you can start using the pieces that it was shipped in to make other parts for the laser. People are gonna think that it's gonna cut through the cardboard and yes, it will nick it, but much like a plasma cutter, you have the rack that holds all the metal, that's gonna get eaten up as well. And it doesn't start fire or anything. So this works out quite well. Let's get into what is happening here on, um, on shape. And I'll show you the CAD involved in this. What we have here is I just created a sort of a uh, finger piece. And this finger piece is the same throughout. Uh, this was basically these guys here, those two were exactly the same. Um, and what I've done is I've come in here and I've made the card thickness. So I've measured the card thickness of the box that they gave us. And the box was the 4.93 millimeters. It's it's close. I just kind of tweaking it just so it kind of snug fit with the with the cardboard. Given the size of the bed is like 390 millimeters or 400 millimeters roughly, um, the box and the cutter aren't going to be able to cut something a little larger than itself. So we're just going to make it out of smaller pieces and then join them together. We're going to join them together with this piece here. And that is nothing more than just a friction fit piece that fits in there. So in the end, is a piece like this that we gotta cut, and we're gonna cut a few of these. I cut them out of cardboard, you're gonna see how fast it is. Again, it's not the world's fastest laser, I agree, but it gets the job done, and it's way faster than if I tried to cut this by hand. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all those pieces and we're gonna nest them together, just like you see here, and we're gonna take the little splicer pieces and put them in. Now, this will give you a one inch riser for all the pieces that you want to engrave and whatnot. Uh, we can figure out how to lock that down onto the bench once we figure out exactly where the laser is going to be sitting. And I'm going to try in the future here to do a downdraft table so it sucks all the smoke out. The other thing is, is that they have a little spacer thing and that piece of aluminum uh, gives you the space of the laser. And I can see that thing growing legs and walking away in my shop somewhere. Might me i'm not too sure it's not like i misplace everything constantly over and over again driving myself mad this thing i could see moving rolling being a pain in the butt so i'm going to do a little laser cut mount that you screw onto the to the laser and you will always have it nice and handy right there what i've done here is i've just taken a bunch of pieces i've cut a hole here and i've made a screw there this is gonna fit on the front corner and it's just a screw. And basically what I need to do is I need to lay this out. It is made out of three millimeter plywood. Um, it takes a little longer to cut uh, given that it's plywood and stuff, but the cuts are super clean and everything fits together so nice. These are things that are kind of blowing me away about this machine. The actual 
curve. The line, the actual cut itself is gonna have a gap, but that gap is so small because of the diode laser. I'm gonna leave some links down below on where you can find these laser cut DXFs that you'll be able to put into Lightburn or whatever software you're using. So let's see where we can buy one of these guys. You come to cinesmall.com, so S-I-N-I-S-M-A-L-L.com, and you'll be able to find the Otur, the one that I have. This is not the one I have. If we scroll down, it's under New Arrivals, and it's the Aferro Laser 2. Yeah, you know, this thing's... <laughs> you can't beat the price. Totally worth going and checking this stuff out. You will find some coupon codes down below in the description. Those will help you get a bit of a discount with this store as well. And I encourage you to do so. Tech support for this was outstanding. I'd send them a message and if it was in the evenings, it would be within a few minutes and I had an answer. They definitely wanted to work with me on getting this working. So um, that's another thing is, is the, the support that you get on the back end with these guys is, is pretty decent. These lasers punch way above their weight class, minus the fact that you need to establish an air assist for cutting. Don't have to, but it definitely helps. And you need to figure out how to evacuate all the gases that come from the cutting. This thing's got, got some chops. And I'll be honest, I'm looking at my big laser going, can I replace it with this? Anyhow, um, that is kind of a new tool I'm playing with and I'm really digging it and I think you might as well. So links below, make sure you check their stuff out. It's, it's a good laser. I, I went in skeptical and they sold me on it.